Um, let me cover the remainder of the agenda. I think uh, uh, I want you to cover this at, um, right about now because this is around the time when some people uh, might have, you know, not <laughs> taken care to observe the moon when you could, and now you are facing some difficulties during the time when you can't, and um, and you know things will come up. And I didn't want to start the project with this because it's a kind of our plan B. And the thing about plan B, it's it's not plan A. So, um, <laughs> so I think for many of you now is the right time for me to talk about this plan B. So let me do that. Uh, so let me start out with what uh, description what proper moon observations might have been like uh, with the help of the photos that I've been taking. And as a, a reminder, the photos, they are optional. You don't have to take them. I take them because I want you to, and so that I have some things to share. Um, this photo is, by the way, before we started the moon observations project. Uh, it's with my cell phone. It's terrible. I think this might be a quarter phase moon. I can't quite tell. Um, but. In any case, uh, this photo I'm not gonna use at all. Um, so, um, so here I'm using my uh, Google photo because it has it shows the metadata. It's nice for me that way because <laughs> uh, I didn't take any of the notes, but with the help of the metadata, I can kind of reconstruct the note that I should have taken if I were doing this project like you guys are doing if uh, you are doing what I preach. So this is, uh, uh, let me count this as my first observation, although you won't have anything this early. I took this photo on Friday to be able to share uh, as I was beginning to talk about phases of moon project on the Monday after. So one of the logs, my logs might be, uh, so I have one from June 18th, um, 8.33 PM. Um, um, the, I think, uh, was I looking directly to south? Uh, I think uh, um, uh, it, uh, Moon observed directly to south. Um, and if uh, so, that is relevant because which side is lit? Uh, identifying that as eastern or western side, it depends on what direction I'm looking. If I'm looking directly to south or close enough to it, then, um, sorry, with the, the webcam, it's a little bit weird. So for me, my right side is uh, would be uh, would be um, would be uh, west. So for you, you'll have to imagine you know you're looking at the, so south, and then right is west. Um, so anyways, um, so um, so based on that self orientation, I would just say uh, western side of the moon is lit about. 50%. Is that 50%? I think I took a better photo. Yeah, there it is. Oh, maybe a little bit more. So this is one um, with one of my telephoto zoom uh, cameras. Um, yeah. Wait, are these? Yeah, these are all on the same day. So I'm not gonna, so, okay. Okay, so June 22nd. Uh, June 22nd, so when I was observing this moon, and I think I took additional photos, I did the one later so that I could take a better photo. But let me just to do this, because here I remember better that I was looking westward. Um, so, and, and at 7.29 p.m., moon observed uh, west, uh, oh wait, not west, east, um, in the east. Um, maybe on a uh, hour or two after rise. Um, so, and looking at this moon, so because I'm looking in the east, this is how I would orient myself, that the side away from ground is west, side towards the ground is east. So it's still western side is lit. Um, western side of the moon is lit about, Oh, I don't know, 80%, 90%, I can't really tell. Uh, it's hard to estimate fraction of, uh, I think it's maybe more 90%. Um, and you know, this is approximate, you don't have to be super accurate. I mean, you know, if you wanted to create numbers, you can like, look up astronomical data and I'm really trying to encourage you to do the actual observation. And the, I, maybe the hardest thing about this project is just uh, how many ways there are to take a shortcut. 
and <laughs> and like June 23rd, the sky was pretty cloudy. I think I really had to time carefully to be able to find the moon uh, or find the time when the cloud cover was decent that I could actually observe the moon. For many people, you might not have seen the moon at all. So, um, so you know, your, um, um, your description here might have actually be observation attempted uh, at 11 p.m. Uh, no moon may be behind the clouds. Uh, that could easily have been it. And for my June 24th, and, um, and I took this photo in the morning as I was coming in. So for June 24th, sort of, um, I'm going to count this as June 27th because this I was hoping to catch them before it set. Uh, 27th, um, I would just say cloudy skies, uh, no moon observation. So, so this is the scenario I'm looking at. Um, for those of you who might have been able to see the moon, uh, probably not June 18th because that's before the project has started, but you saw the moon June 22nd and 23rd and maybe 24th, then the observation you have so far was great, good enough for the preliminary log. And right now you are not able to see the moon, but you know, that's fine. Um, these things happen, you have no control over it. You don't really have to correct for it. Um, the thing that I'm sharing now goes more for people who um, might not have that. Maybe back on the 22nd and 23rd, you didn't quite realize <laughs> how observation conditions could get worse later in the week. Um, and you are at current moment having basically no moon observation. and. And what I would tell you is, that, so this is the place where um, you do have to take a, a bit of a shortcut. And uh, there are many ways to take a shortcut. And this is the shortcut that I recommend <laughs> that I think still goes um, most closely with the original spirit of the assignment. And so one shortcut that I really strongly encourage you not to take is to just to look up the data. That goes completely against the, I mean, you know, if you're just gonna use the data, then um, <laughs> why do the observation at all? <laughs> why the science? Why not just trust the scientists? By the way, that, I'm being sarcastic there. Um, so uh, I, I would really like you not to use astronomical data, which you can easily look up. I know you can easily look up. And uh, sometimes, you know, when people are copying ad astronomical data, they don't know what data they are looking at. They, they don't copy it right. Uh, that's one of the things that I look for when I grade these logs. Um, the logs should look like logs of someone who actually did observation. Um, if it doesn't, then I know. <laughs> Um, so the shortcut I would recommend instead, because you know the thing about real observation, you can't do it when the conditions are bad. I'm just looking at outside the clouds, <laughs> and you can do it uh, uh, retroactively. So um, what you can do retroactively, and what you can do when the conditions are bad, is you can run simulation. So you can do this on Stellarium. It will require use of a computer because the Stellarium software I'm using has to be installed on desktop. So, okay, um, I'm in uh, Stellarium simulation. And right now I shouldn't be able to see the moon anywhere because it's a, uh, um, it is set. Um, so I need to actually go back in time a little bit. Let me bring up the uh, time control here and go back in time a little bit. There it is. So um, the reason I would recommend Stellarium as a way to either perform <laughs> observations that you can't, or in cases when you have really significant gap in the log, that would be the case where um, you don't have these uh, observations from the times when they could have been made. Um, is 
so the reason I recommend this is you can still simulate the conditions for observing the moon. So you have a very specific time that you can pretend that when you are that's when you are making the observation, and you can also orient yourself. You can see, okay, this is south, and uh, to my right is west. So when I look at the moon, it's kind of in the western sky. So I can simulate that experience. And uh, this uh, or default to zoom doesn't quite indicate um, the actual natural field of view. I think about this size is closer to the field of view most people would have on a decent sized screen. Or if depend if you're using a smaller screen, then something like this might be closer to what you would see in the sky. But uh, you can simulate what you would be viewing. And if you really want the experience to be complete, you can even turn off the planet label so that you don't see a label that says moon. <laughs> um, so that's uh, the moon that you would have observed this morning at 9 a.m. if it's not cloudy in your area. So, so I'm going to pretend that I'm looking at that and re record the log based on that. And um, so I could say for... Uh, June 27th, and I'm obtaining the observation at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, moon observed in the west, uh, a little before setting. Um, and because I'm uh, looking towards west, the side that's closer to the ground is west. Then, oh, so it's not the Western side that's lit. So it's the Eastern side that's lit. Eastern side of the moon is lit about, I don't know, 70%. And just the, going by the image, I know time and date, I think it says 80%, who knows? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's uh, one way you can, oh wait, not June 27th, it's June 28th. Um, so it's a simulated observation. It's not real observation, but given the two better choices of simply looking up astronomical data, which I wish people wouldn't do, and two, uh, doing this simulated observation, this is much, much better because you are to some degree, uh, this will actually prepare you for the actual observation on the days when you can make the real observation, but um, the, the way the astronomical data wouldn't. And, um, and you know, if you're in the place where you haven't made some of these possible observations, yeah, you can go back and fill them in. Um, one thing I would probably ask if you are using Stellarium to fill, uh, fill in some of the missing observations is um, I would ask you to take a screenshot, if only because, um, wait, am I? Let me zoom out a little bit. Where's the moon? Oh, all right. Um, I would ask you to take a screenshot, uh, if only because um, it's easier to take a screenshot of a running software like this. If you're on Windows, there's a screenshotting to a screen snip here. They can, oh wait. Uh, so, you know, you can take a screenshot like this. My, I think the screenshot is copied into clipboard. It's just not um, showing here. So let me just paste here. Um, I, I would, uh, if you're using Stellarium to uh, fill in the observation gap, I would ask you to include the screenshot only to kind of show that you use the Stellarium. Um, and, and, and it's also easier uh, when you're taking photos, unless you happen to have a telephoto zoom, it's really hard. But if you're taking, uh, if you're using Stellarium, all you have to do is learn how to take a screenshot or failing that you can take a literal photo of your screen. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, this is a, so this is about the right time to share this method because I expect some people were, um, uh, that this is the around, so each semester there are problems that I don't, haven't quite anticipated. So this semester, um, I didn't really realize how difficult it would be to observe the full moon in the Bay Area at, at this time of the year, because the weather pattern that you've seen in the past few days are typical weather pattern for here, you know, sunny skies in the uh, day and cloudy sky in the evening. It's typical. I just uh, didn't fully realize what that would mean for moon observation for the full moon, uh, which is usually up at only at night. So, um, so this is, uh, um, 
again, demonstration of how you can either fill in the gaps in observation that um, you might have for things that you could have controlled but didn't. And to um, if it is cloudy weather continues for another couple of days, then I might just be telling people to just do this so that you don't have a, a more than longer than a week's gap in your observation. So 